lipstick. Now you say, well, what does a guy like me know about lipstick? Well, you might be surprised. That's right. We're not going to cover extensively the history of lipstick because, quite honestly, it goes back to the... It goes even further back than even the Arabs. And boy, I, I, it would take me forever to cover that one. Okay, But there is one thing I think I know that you don't know that you ought to know. Okay, And that comes from Waterbury, Connecticut. And you said to go, well, Waterbury, Connecticut? Who cares about Waterbury, Connecticut? What do they have to do with lipstick? Okay, here we go. They had a manufacturing plant called the Scoville Manufacturing Company. Okay. This plant was constructed and went into operation in 1802. And it continued in operation all the way to 1956. Say, well, okay, who cares? They were a manufacturing company. What did they manufacture? Now, that's a good question. The answer is brass objects. Brass screws, brass buttons. If it was supposed to be brass, these people made it. Okay? And half the employees of this company were women. Okay? But the other half, of course, were men. And one of the men in that company was named Maurice Levy. That's right, there was a guy in this company named Maurice Levy. And he thought it would be cool to mass produce lipstick, but he had a real challenge on his hands because lipstick at that time was applied with a brush. And he said, well, man, how the heck are we going to mass produce and sell lipstick if they, we have to do it with a brush applicator? That's really inconvenient for women. So he was tinkering around with his brass and he formed a cylinder. Okay. Now, as you know, cylinders relate to mathematics. This, this, this right here would be a cylinder. Okay? Right here. This would be a cylinder. Okay? So I thought, you know what? If we can make something cylindrical with a, le with a lever, okay, with a lever, to push the lipstick up as it's needed, or push it back down, then I bet as Maurice thought to himself, we can market this. So what he did was he fashioned a cylindrical tube, because the tube is cylindrical, put a little lever on it, put the lipstick inside, and by gollies, it worked. And he started mass producing these cylinders. I'm not sure whether he did it through the Scoville Manufacturing Company or not, but he did mass produce these cylinders. And kabang, kaboom, that's how the lipstick got stored in tubes. And now you know. There's a little bit of history in there. A little bit about mathematics. I am going to be teaching about cylinders in my Euclid proofs in the near future. And we got a lot to cover. And if it hadn't been for Euclid cylinders, Maurice Levy might not have had the idea to make the lipstick tubes. I don't know. I never actually met the guy, but it's something to think about. So, when did Maurice Levy start manufacturing this stuff? Well, he started manufacturing these cylindrical tubes back in 1915. Yep, the company had been around quite a long time before he started his manufacturing. And I'm pretty sure because he worked for Scoville Manufacturing Company, not exactly well sure what position he worked in, that he somehow made an arrangement with the company and they probably made the, the first tubes for lipstick. Wow. Well, you guys just got an education. If you want to provide any further information about uh, Waterbury, Connecticut, or about the Scoville Manufacturing Company, or if you know anything more about Maurice Levy, or you want to provide more details about the cylinder itself and the lever, or the lever, sorry, the lever, so on and so forth, go ahead and leave comments down here below. I'd love to hear your feedback. But anyway, 
that'll keep you busy for tonight. I'll tell you more in a future video, so stay tuned.